Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Dear uh, committee members of the School Board of Education, I would like to thank you in advance for, for letting me speak here and uh, also uh, allow me to give opinion against item two, description title, ethnic uh, studies and overview of Americans of um, Mexican descent. The curriculum title uh, should either be labeled ethnic studies and overview of Mexican American studies or just ethnic studies of uh, Mexican American studies. With that being said, uh, the uh, changes may be confusing to some as, as into the question of citizenship. Um, I don't go over and say, because I know you're African American, I don't go say he's just African. He's African American. He will get his African American studies. I am Mexican American. I was born Mexican American. I will always be Mexican American. I will be labeled other things. I will be Hispanic, Latino, no. Because they broke that up a long time ago. They broke us up from uh, Hispanic and Latino. I don't have to care about explaining that. That's not for me to explain. My solution is to keep it simple, to not confuse, and so are even label Mexican American studies as a science project. These labels bring up the question of ethnicity across the board of either you are or not a certain ethnicity. Are you a citizen in this country? No. We should not question that. That will be a legal question. Is that what you want that to be? A legal question. That's my speech. That's it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So we'll have the four um, that were, and I think the president of LULAC was in that four, so we'll actually have five. <laughs> so. Yeah, she didn't testify, but that she was she was part of the presentation, I guess. Go ahead. What uh, questions? Yes, Mr. Allen. Douglas Torres Edwards, the originator. In your original charge to establish the course for the Houston Independent School District, what what was what was requested of you? And during that process, was there any consideration of what what was what requested of you? What would it be called? In 2014, then Chief Academic Officer Dan Gold tasked me with looking at the possibility of creating learning standards for an innovative course focusing on the experiences and histories of Mexican Americans. There was prior to that a resolution from our Board of Education in 2014 that charged our school district's leadership, its administration, to move forward. Dan Goal had known that I had had previous engagement with TEA as well as with social, social studies curriculum more broadly. And so he brought the issue to me and I said, I will happily accept the charge of looking at creating an innovative course in Mexican American studies. And so it was just, I guess, an assumption that the title automatically would be Mexican American studies. Well, the intent of the Houston ISD Board of Education resolutions was to create a course that focused specifically on the experiences of Mexican Americans. I've said this before, thank you very much. But one of the things I wanted to ask is that I've, I've heard some discussion of people wanting to, to put another layer onto the course that's already been developed. And one, uh, a time frame. I think that you would do well in this time of streamlining uh, our social studies. Anything added would be a bridge too far. Uh, I would like your opinion on that. And also, a lot of the things that I've heard that they want to add are found in other courses, like the study of the Aztec. Uh, you know, that's, that we find in, in the World History course. So could you address that? 
Yeah, so to your latter part uh, regarding the experiences of Indigenous Americans and their history, or Indigenous peoples, I should say, because certainly they fall outside what we now consider the United States of America, that, that does appear in other courses like 7th grade Texas history, 8th grade U.S. history, high school U.S. history, although, frankly, not necessarily with the same frame by which Mexican-American studies would approach those topics, but those are theirs, and that is part of what informed why this particular course does include discussions and analyses of those experiences, but it is one of the reasons why it focuses more discreetly or distinctly on the 20th century emergence of contemporary Mexican-American identity. Um, to the broader point around, and this also goes to Member Allen's question as well, around um, if you remember uh, around um, other frames than Mexican-American studies, like a broader Latino studies course, um, I mean, I came here months ago and said, could this course be adapted to be a broader Latino studies course? And to the consternation of many, I shared, yeah, it could, but it wasn't our original intent. It wasn't the charge that I got from our Houston ISD Board of Education it would require a fairly significant reworking of the frame, of the epistemologies, of the methodology of the course. So that's why I've just stayed focused on the charge that I originally received from our then Chief Academic Officer. Uh, to, um, to Member Allen's question as well around, there were discussions among leadership in our school district. Is Mexican American studies the way to go? Or do we try to create a broader Latino studies course? It's why I brought that comment uh, to this body a few moment, uh, a few months ago, but ultimately the leadership has coalesced behind the original intent of the Houston ISD Board of Education uh, resolution, and that is to create a course that focuses on the history of Mexican Americans. And more broadly to the issue of the name change, I'll echo uh, what Trustee Lita and others have said, that the challenge with changing the name to something like this is that it's going to bring derision for lots of reasons, if for no other reason, the fact that the body of scholarship refers to this field as Mexican-American studies. There are lots of other reasons why the change to, of the name to an overview of Americans of Mexican descent is problematic. I'm sure we'll hear lots of testimony for those reasons. But for me, primarily, the challenge is that it, it's, it's, it's not intellectually honest. The intellectually honest name for this course is what scholars refer to it as, which is Mexican-American studies. There is a giant however I need to offer, which is that while I think the name change uh, is problematic, I do actually understand and to a certain respect, respect perhaps some of, of the sentiment behind that name change. So when I was here a few months ago and then watched uh, proceedings follow, I, if I recall, there were 10 members of the State Board of Education who in whole scale endorsed the framework of this course, but for whatever reasons, their constituencies or otherwise, they just couldn't bring themselves to call the course what it ought to be called, which is Mexican-American Studies. There's got to be reasons behind that that go beyond pettiness. And what I suspect is that there is a concern among many folks who are reluctant to ethnic studies that somehow when you promote an exploration of eth ethnic identity that you're somehow elevating that exploration at the expense of promoting American values and citizenship. And what I will offer is that there is nothing in Houston ISD's innovative course in Mexican American study, studies, I should say, nor the proposed teaks for this statewide course that does that. And in fact, it's in courses like these where we want students to really grapple about their personal ideas, or identities, I should say, including their ethnic identity, and how that intersects with the unifying idea, identity, or perhaps we should say the ideally unifying identity of being Americans. 
this is actually the kind of course where we want that analysis to happen. It's why, in particular, in the knowledge and skill statement on nine, number nine in the proposed rule text, around citizenship, where we specifically slow down to explore the histories and connotations of all of the nomenclature, including Mexican-American, but other uh, aspects of no nomenclature related to Mexican-Americans. So what I want to do is share that, that the sentiment that I think was part of behind 10 members offering that amendment some months ago is something that we should rightfully explore in the course. And instead of changing the name to something that is going to bring the derision that will naturally follow, folks who are concerned about the juxtaposition of ethnic identity and American identity should focus on the substantive elements of the course in that citizen strand and focus efforts there instead to really ensure that our responsibilities as educators are to promote American values. I have no problem saying that. But when we change the name of a people, as this course implies, it's going to be received by many as an indignity on their personhood because it implies that somehow being Mexican-American is a threat to the notion of being American. We, we are all Americans here. And ethnic identity should not be a test of what it means to be American. <laughs> okay, I, I will ask you guys uh, not to clap. I understand, uh, but let's do this, okay? We're happy for this. Yeah, well, that's true. It was unexpected, and I, I wasn't paying attention whether people clapped or not. That's but. a little bit different, though. <laughs> that's not testimony. Yeah, it wasn't uh, testimony. That's true. I'm, I'm still, like, question person. Oh, yes. Uh, I don't no, think wait, I have anybody else. I, yeah, Miss Hardy. Uh, Doug, if my, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Wait, Ms. wait, Hardy. I have not finished. Oh, you were still asking. So sorry. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, Miss Hardy. I wanted to say I truly appreciate what you had to say. Uh, I think it's a very interesting and it's spoken like a true social studies person. Uh, I also would let you know that I've been around so long that in the 70s, when the Chicano movement was strong, we taught uh, in the school where I was, we had a course on Indian studies, Mexican American studies, and uh, African American studies. Uh, it's, no, mine was called African American studies at that time. I'm older than you are, <laughs> and they, 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 they uh, you know, that was in, in reference to the different people who saw it from different time periods. There really has been, uh, you know, if you've been around a long time, you see the different uh, uh, usage of the different words, but uh, I, it, it really, I will say, it never dawned on me what the separation that we're talking about now when we were doing that. They were truly academic. You were studying the study of Mexican Americans, you were studying the, you know, uh, Indian Americans and Native, I think it was called Native American Studies at that time. But uh, anyway, I just wanted you to know that I appreciate what you had to say. Thank you. Did you want to go first? Or? I just have a couple of questions for, for him. Yeah. Um, so um, I wanted to ask the author of the course, thank you so much for being here. Have you had an opportunity to look at the other document that was presented um, at the last meeting um, by, by some professors and such that were wanting? Have you been able to put it next to yours and see if there are places that can be merged that aren't covered in other courses? I know that. You said a lot of it might be covered in other courses from a different angle, but um, is there a way to uh, use some of that content, because I'm sure you know, some of it is very, very good, without 
overextending the class, which I know is a year-long class. Is there a way to add some of that without killing the teachers by adding yeah. too much time and too much content? Or are you referring specifically to the feedback brought forth by the Um Yes, right. Okay. Yeah, and that group. That's part of what I was trying to do in sharing some context around the decision making around why the course addresses those earlier topics, why it does focus on 20th century developments in particular. It's a matter of points of emphasis. I will share that as a matter of principle. I am always nervous that more is not more, less is more. Right. That's why. Uh, the State Board of Education and TEA are currently examining streamlining across all social studies courses. And so is that content appropriate for a Mexican-American uh, studies course? Absolutely. An understanding of the experiences of indigenous peoples and the through line from that to uh, colonial history and the Atlantic history and, and histories of Spain um, and other nations. All of that is appropriate. Uh, but to go back to the, the original charge that I had internally at my own school district, the, the, we, we made a choice because we want students to have opportunities to dive deeply, in particular to some of what I was sharing earlier, the intersection of ethnic identity, American identity, and the perceived tensions, which I don't think there are tensions, but the perceived tensions between the two. I mean, so the, what, what the Osvaldo and others have shared is absolutely appropriate. It's simply a matter of placing priorities. And in this case, when we developed this course, Andre and I, uh, we were really wanting to focus in particular on the 1930s and the emergence of what we might call civil rights and the identity associated with that among Mexican Americans. So is that a yes or a no? We're in between. Yeah, so the only <laughs> nervousness I have is not about the appropriateness of the yeah. content. Okay. I don't have any nervousness right. about that or, or right. negative feedback. It is absolutely appropriate. Right. The challenge is that this is an elective course right. in Mexican American studies. And so when we developed the course, we really wanted to be thoughtful about how to dive deeply. And that's why we made the decision to focus more specifically on 20th century okay. developments well, as that, the core. That helps. Yeah, that, but that not the that. universe of possible topics. Right, gotcha. Well, and as a former classroom teacher, I agree, less is more because you want to take the, the deep dive, especially with students who choose this as an elective, mm -hmm. I would think. So, all right, well, thank you for your insight. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair.